I'm the best, so do not test the top of my profession. The master of my chosen field, of that there is no question. Serious, serious profession. Serious, serious profession. Selfish, arrogant, insensitive, short-tempered and demanding. And that's on a good day. Any children? Yes, Gareth. I was desperate to have kids. My body clock's been ticking so loudly, my gynecologist has started wearing earplugs. <laughs> He's always too busy with the restaurant. Are you still sleeping together? Oh, yes. Plenty of sleep. No sex. <laughs> plenty of sleep. Thank you for being so candid. Now, uh, Mr. Blackstock. <laughs> I'm so sorry. He did promise he'd be here. So, what do you think about my plans for improving Le Chateau Anglais? <laughs> <laughs> OK. We can build on that. Cyril, you cannot improve upon that which is already perfect. The ceiling of the Sistine Chapel does not need a second coat. The Mona Lisa wouldn't look better in a hat. <laughs> and Michelangelo's David does not need a little companion called Kevin. But the restaurant <laughs> does need more punters, Gar. It's Gareth! <laughs> and Le Chateau Anglais does not have punters. We cater for the discerning diner. Well, we don't cater for enough of them. Which is why you went skint and had to sell the restaurant to me, remember? How could I forget? <laughs> so now it's time for a change. Set menus, open up the bar area, lick a paint, maybe even knock out a few classy bar snacks. Yeah, we could all put on silly hats and have a big sign outside saying, Welcome to McChateau. <laughs> nah. I was thinking more in the lines of a big reopening bash. We could invite stars of stage, screen and football pitch. Oh, dead classy, like. Cyril, I have seen documentaries on Hollywood pets that exude more class than you. <laughs> Understand this. Le Chateau Anglais is my life, my passion. I treat it with respect as I would a beautiful woman. I nurture it, I cherish it, I caress it. I buy it Belgian chocolates. <laughs> on its birthday, I leave expensive silken lingerie under its pillow. What I do not do is whistle at it from the tops of building sites with my bum crack poking out of the back of my jeans. <laughs> That's what I like about you, Gareth, your artistic temperature. <laughs> All you creative types have got it. Look at Mozart, he cut his ear off. <laughs> well, tell him to send it over in a minicab. We can serve it as a bar snack. <laughs> bar snacks? We're talking bar snacks, Janice. <laughs> I mean, this is the slippery slope. I mean, before you know it, he'll be closing down the kitchen and putting in the flipping roller disco. The man is a complete philistine. All he cares about is making money. Not that there's anything wrong with money, you know, but... but... Janice, are you going out? Oh, well, there's no pulling the wool over your eyes, is there, Gareth? Where are you going? Anywhere. I'm leaving you. What? <laughs> Just like that? I had toyed with the idea of causing you unspeakable physical pain first, but... Frankly, I couldn't think of a part of your anatomy worth blunting a decent blade on. <laughs> You're upset with me, aren't you? You're a bastard, Gareth. I put my whole life on hold for you. Friends, career, having a family. Ah, the family thing. I had meant to get back to you on well, that. Well, I'm sick to death of being taken for granted. I mean, how can I, a mere woman, ever hope to compete with that? No, that's the real love of your life. I hope we'll both be very happy together. Janice, I think we should talk about this. Driver, go. Driver, stay. I said go. <laughs> Janice, you're acting irrationally. <laughs> it's probably just a spot of PMT. <laughs> <laughs> Good, Savannah. Oh, thanks, Everton. Did I ever tell you about the time in L.A. when I created a dish especially for Robin Williams? Robin said it was sensational. Well, when I used to work in my auntie's takeaway down the Arrow Road, I once served my dumplings to this bloke whose cousin rode his fraz was. <laughs> you can't let that sort of thing go to your head, you know what I mean? Mm. 
Oh, you'd love L.A. Everton. The sun is always shining. Oh, and the restaurants are so modern. Yeah, well, what with all the riots and earthquakes, they have to rebuild them every three years, don't they? <laughs> Hello, Rob. Hi, it's Gareth. Gareth Blackstock. Well, it's not that much of a surprise, is it? I mean, you're one of our oldest, closest friends. Nine years. <laughs> well, you know how it is. So how's, um... Laura! <laughs> Dear old Laura. <laughs> She's... dead. <laughs> well, life goes on, you know. So, Rob, um, have you seen Janice at all? My wife, Janice? Black, 5'5", five, five, attractive, a woman? <laughs> no? All right, then. Stay in touch, matey. <laughs> Tell you about the time Steve Martin and Mary Lou Henner came into the kitchen to thank me personally for the meal I'd cooked for them? No. What happened? Well, Steve Martin and Mary Lou Henner came into the kitchen to thank me personally for the meal I'd cooked for them. Oh, wow. It was amazing. I suspect they was on drugs, they all are out there. Good stuff. Am I beginning to detect a little hostility? Ah, oh, bull's eye, Savannah. This is because I'm American, right? No, Spider-Man was an American. I loved him. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Do you know something? I always wanted to run up walls when I was a kid. Then it's because I'm a woman. No, it was because the lift in our block of flats were always out of order. <laughs> and we lived on the 17th floor. But if I was bitten by a radioactive spider, that sort of thing would be no problem. I'd just ribbon up there. <laughs> Listen up, Bigfoot. Having breasts does not make me an inferior human being. I like women, Savannah, and I love breasts. That's all breasts, with very few exceptions whatsoever. And what's more, I happen to be a passionate supporter of women's rights. I view all discrimination as despicable, no matter who it's aimed at. Well, then how come you and I can't learn to get along? You get on me tits, that's what. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's that? I uh, got this. Chef, is everything all right, sort of thing? Of course it is, Everton. Why'd you ask? Oh, nothing, Chef. It's just that you're decorating wild cherry tarts with slices of pickled beetroot, Chef. <laughs> Actually, that's Nicole Kidman's favourite dish. Is it? Did I ever tell you about the Savannah. time that she and Tom... Yes, Chef. Belt up. <laughs> I love it when he's assertive. <laughs> it's like he's here, but his mind's somewhere else different altogether, sort of thing. If you know what I mean. Mm. He's in pain. I can sense that he's hurting deep down. That's his underpants are cut an inch of him. <laughs> you have to get him to talk about whatever's bothering him. You know, show him that you care. But we don't care. <laughs> yes, we do. Well, a bit. Oh, come on, Gus, you can have a word with him, couldn't you? Oh, why me? You've known him longest anyway, you both. What? You know. <laughs> what? Oh, I see. Well, I'd love to, but I'm going out for a curry tonight with my old mates. You might know them. Linford Christie, Trevor MacDonald and Harry Belafonte. <laughs> Cyril, I have something to say. Yeah, your wife's done a bunk, I heard. You <laughs> should have told me. I'm an understanding man. You're like the son I never had. <laughs> I thought you had a son. Well, I have, but you went like him. <laughs> Cyril, my personal life is none of your business. You're right. I just wanted you to know that if there is anything I can do, don't be afraid to ask. Thank you. I won't say another word. Good. Cyril, when the first Mrs. Bryson left me, do you know what I found a huge comfort? If this involves anything inflatable, I really do not want to know. <laughs> <laughs> I threw myself into it like a man possessed, and that is what you have got to do, son. Cyril, remove your hands from my person, or I'll chew them off at the wrists. <laughs> well, face it, son. This place means more to you than she ever did. You've said as much yourself. Let me tell you what Le Chateau Anglais means to me. Mm. It means...